Genesis chapter 12, we have the amazing beginning of the life of Abraham. Well, not the beginning of his life, but his call by the Lord. L listen to the beginning of chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. It's here where God begins to, well, start the nation of Israel. So powerfully and surprisingly and simply, God chooses Abram. God's plan was to make for himself a great nation, a people that were his very own. And he chose to begin it with Abram. That's what we just read. That's what we recorded. It's vital to the history of the world. God's people and God's plan comes to the Jews, the people of Israel, to offer salvation to the world through faith in Jesus Christ. Abraham later will be renamed Abraham. So whether God and Abraham had ever spoken prior, we don't know. But we do know the Lord speaks to him and he gives him a command and a bunch of promises. The command was for Abram to go away from his country, his people, his father's house. This promise must have been, well, beyond anything Abraham ever imagined. At 75 years old, the Bible says, he's probably engaged in life, he's probably got a business, he's married, he's got this beautiful woman we find out later who's his wife, Sarai, and they're childless. So Abram takes off on a journey, and eventually he leaves the area where God had called him to because a famine comes, and he goes into Egypt. And they, they had to find a way to buy food from the people who lived in the well-watered lands along the Nile. And so this is gonna be really the first test of Abraham's faith into who God would make him to be. And Abraham will fail. And yet, even though Abraham's not faithful, God is always faithful. He was afraid he'd be killed by the Egyptians when he was down there. And they saw how beautiful his wife was. So he decided something kind of interesting. Instead of, well, I'm going to be killed. They'll see my wife. They'll take her. They'll give her to the Pharaoh. So he makes up a scheme. He and Sarai would say that she was his sister. And it's kind of a half truth. They did share the same father. It's a practice that was common in that day. And, and so it was a half lie, but also a full lie. She was his wife and they were married. Abraham's hope was that Sarai's brother he would be able to refuse any marriage proposals or at least to remove the motivation for them to kill him in order to have access to his wife, Sarah. Upon entering Egypt, Abraham's fear is quickly justified, partly due to his own deception. Pharaoh hears of Sarah's great beauty. He hears that she's unmarried. So he does, he takes her for his wife and he rewards Abraham handsomely. And he doesn't have any way to refuse to Pharaoh. So that's when the Lord steps in to ensure that his agenda for Abraham will succeed. When we try to fulfill God's promises for him, well, we typically get in the way. So to clean up Abraham's mess, God afflicts Pharaoh and his whole household with some kind of plague. And the truth about the marriage comes to light and Pharaoh's upset and he's fearful, but of what the Lord can do. So he sends the whole company that he is, all the stuff he's given to uh, Abraham and to Sarah back to the promised land. So here's the story, Genesis chapter 12. God calls a man and then he tests a man. He fails the test, but God is still faithful because God's plan can't be stopped. God's gonna use Abraham, God's gonna use me, God's gonna use you even when we mess up and God is faithful. He protects them. He takes them back to the land. In fact, he even blesses them. Not to say mess up so God will bless you, but realize that God's plan is God's plan and he will do it in spite of us.